Time for the market report. Seems prices just keep rising again. That's right, Mike. We'll talk about that and the reasons for it. But first, the numbers going up again, as we said, with one interesting exception. And then our row report, what's moving the ongoing row crop market rise. And finally, an important USDA report on our crop progress. What did it say? Markets on an upswing last week, although it appears to be short term. Seems the bulls went to town and now here we are. Let's, like, let's take a look. Last week's biggest loss, soybeans down seven and a quarter cents. Seems the reason is a pretty good crop so far. That could change, of course. Last week's biggest gain, wheat up 61 cents. Quite a rise. We haven't seen it this high since early July. However, is it a temporary bump? We'll look into it. Seems one of the big reasons for current wheat prices has to do with so much uncertainty, and by now you could guess why, the Ukraine war and its effects on the global marketplace. However, despite current high prices, there's rumblings on the horizon that this is indeed temporary. Market analyst at Lane Cub explains. There's a lot of subtle little things, and you could kind of go one way or the other. Uh, Russia has a nice big crop. North Dakota, Minnesota are late, late harvesting the spring wheat crops. So there's lots of little stories, but the, the overall impact of each of them together is kind of nothing. I mean, that chart is, is pretty flat at the moment, and that may be about as good as we can hope for. I mean, honestly, some stability is, is better than the wild volatility that we experienced earlier this spring. It's hard to get very bearish for wheat because there is always going to be this threat that something new may happen to disrupt those shipments across the Black Sea. Actually, during the month of August, you know, that, that grain corridor was kind of working and somewhere in the range of one million metric tons theoretically made it out of Ukraine. And there's the possibility of lots more coming out of Russia because they had such a big crop and the ruble is weak, et cetera, et cetera. So there's sort of, in my opinion, a bearish tilt to the supply thing. I mean, here in the United States, you look at the futures spreads and the story is that there is bearish ample supply of wheat despite the drought that we have experienced in this country, in wheat country for years now. Nevertheless, we have plenty of the stuff, so you have sort of a bearish tilt, but you can never get too bearish because, yeah, like something strange may happen geopolitically. But let me tell you about the dollar this week. We had a reaction based on what was going on in, in the European Union. They raised interest rates. The euro goes up, dollar goes down, wheat goes up. That's great. That's all fine. But that's sort of a short-term thing until the U.S. Federal Reserve does their own interest rate raise in two weeks. So we have sort of a mismatch in timing between these two central banks. And I wouldn't get too worried about this being a longer-term uh, phenomenon. Moving on to corn, which rose 19 and a quarter cents last week. The expectation being a lower yield this year, which is something we've talked about before. Analyst Elaine Cub says USDA reports are what will determine what's to come this week. Speculation is one thing. Raw data is another. There could be a lot more that they could do. This time around in September, they may actually change some acreage numbers, taking in some FSA data, which would be unusual. So they could make all kinds of adjustments. Um, I think they can still make adjustments to exports, even though we haven't had weekly export data. They probably have access. They certainly, we still certainly see the daily export sales reports, and they seem to be seasonally appropriate. So there could be all kinds of changes and, and some sort of big reaction on Monday. But again, that's not going to be the longer term reality two weeks down the road. I think if they change corn yield, and certainly if they change corn acreage in the September report on Monday, if nothing else, you've got the funds, the algorithmic traders that go through and scrape this data and trade based on the USDA data. Even if other fundamental traders um, already have priced it in based on crop tours, or if they're waiting for um, more certainty from, from harvest reports, which are gonna be late this year. Nevertheless, there will be some sort of, just sort of automatic reaction from computer traders or nothing, if nobody else. And the report Elaine mentioned did indeed drop on Monday along with the WASI report. We'll get into more detail on that next week. But for now, here's what the USDA said. Corn production down 3% from the previous forecast and 8% from 2021. Yields down 2.9 bushels from the previous forecast and 4.5 bushels from last year. Production for soybeans down 3% from the previous forecast and 1% from 2021. Yields down 1.4 bushels from the previous forecast and nearly one bushel from 2021. Cotton production up 10% from the previous forecast, but down 21% from 2021. Yields down 3% from the previous forecast, but up 24 pounds from 2021. So, soybeans down a bit, but that could be temporary. According to Elaine Cub, a decent U.S. harvest and the potential volatility in Brazil could see prices go up again. Ordinarily, we'd be panicking about an early frost with the late planted soybeans, but my understanding of the weather forecast so far is that we should expect to see a nice, long, warm, late 
summer, end to the summer here, and no current threat of early frost that anybody's talking about. So, you know, knock on wood, it might all work out. And uh, yeah, you, you, then this weather, as you mentioned, the, the rain that comes through and falling on these late planted soybeans is still going to do some good bearishly to production. Generally, our worry is, the, is of the late development. And you see that in the, in the crop progress report. Everything is about three to four percentage points behind average pace of, of progress. There could be considerable volatility from the Brazilian real and their currency. When we're talking about the dollar's effect on things and the Russian ruble's effects and the Brazilian currency's effect on things, that could be very volatile in October with their presidential elections coming up. So it pays to pay attention to that. Their planting season will probably be nice and fast because the, the current forecast is for, for good rains to get started here. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets. Seems like we're in for a bearish harvest this year. War and weather the cause, but do keep in mind we still have ample stocks for now. Yeah.